Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Mahaney, and I'm the Chief Veterinary Advisor on the Albet Sciences Pets in Needs Project. And I have two really special guests with us today. Only one that you can see right now, but another one who will be joining us soon. So please introduce yourselves and tell us what you do. Hi, my name is Sarah Paulson, and Winnie Winifred is her full name. She is sleeping at the moment, but I am going to drag her over here because, you know, this is about animals, and this was this is the little creature who has changed my life all for the better. This is Winnie. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I rescued her from a place called Paul Works, and um, I've been thinking about getting a dog for a really long time. I had had two dogs. Um, hi, Winnie. Do you get camera shy? <laughs> I'm not an actress, Mom. This is crazy. Yes, Winnie had some some dental surgery yesterday, so she's feeling a little bit um, less than her sort of spunky puppy self today. She normally let her sit down. She normally is so energetic that she definitely looks like a more subdued version of her. But I'm glad yeah. we were able to proceed with the plan yesterday because she. Well, I've told you about what was going on in her mouth. Why don't you tell us? I believe my understanding is that she had um, deciduous teeth. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. which I guess are her milk teeth or baby teeth that in some breeds, particularly in smaller dogs, this can happen where your adult teeth come in and your baby teeth have not been pushed out. They don't fall out and there's no blood supply there. Is that right? Yes. So there can be a great deal of infection also to the tooth, the, the adult tooth next to it because they share a gum line. Is mm -hmm. that right? That Something was a like really, that. really good explanation. Thank Would you. you like to join me on some of my house calls in the future? <laughs> yes, I can <laughs> come and diagnose a couple things. Yeah, I would love that. So, so tell us about Winnie. Like um, you said, where she came from. Why did you right now decide to go about getting a pet? You know, I've really, really been wanting to get a dog for a very long time. I'm an enormous um, animal advocate and lover, and I've uh, I grew up with a lot of cats because I lived in New York City, so we didn't really have a dog. Um, but I had a dog as a really small child, but um, and then as a as a adult, I've had dogs that I, I've loved so much. Um, but my working life has been such that it's been very hard for me to think about introducing a dog into my life while my work schedule was such that I knew I wouldn't have any time to really dedicate fully right. to it. And I've never had a puppy. I've never had a dog from puppydom, never raised a, raised a little fur creature, human with a fursuit is what I like to call her. She's my daughter, but she's just wearing a fur costume. We don't, we don't know why. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I had been wanting to do it for a long time, but as I said, my work life was just the thought of sort of introducing her to my world and having her be more familiar with um, people that work with me as opposed to me because I couldn't be with her regularly, I thought would not be <clears throat> a good idea. So we find ourselves in, a, in an entirely new world where we're all sort of, uh, those of us that do certain kinds of work are finding ourselves standing down, whereas there are plenty of essential workers that, that do not have um, the ability to do that. So my work life just really kind of stopped. And I was on the phone with a friend of mine and she, my friend who has several dogs. And I said, should I just drive out? Should I drive out right now to, to Camarillo, which is I believe where Paul works is? And it's like an hour away. And I know they're doing adoptions this the weekend. And she was like, yeah, you really should. And I was like, wait, I should? And she was like, yeah, you should go right now. I was like, I should go right now? She's like, yeah, go right now. So I hung up the phone. I turned to Holland. I was like, I'm, go I'm going to get a dog. I'm going, I'm going out. I'm going to go out and get a dog. And, and I just got in the car. It was the first time I'd been out of my house in about a month. And I just drove there. And it turned out that a lot of the puppies had been adopted already. But Chad, uh, who runs the organization, said, you know, I have a couple of dogs that have not been posted yet. That, that you know. And I said, well, bring me what you what you think might work. And he said, well, what are you interested in? And I said, you know, I, I really am hoping to have a dog that uh, might have a, a little bit of confidence. I had two Italian greyhounds before that I loved, but they were really timid dogs. And I, as I said, I got them when I was, they were about four years old. So a lot of patterns had already been established. They were never house trained. And I just thought I would like to have a dog who's both smart and, and it's kind of confident um, because I do have to go home, go, go to work sometimes and I won't be able to be with her every second. And so I was hoping to have a, a dog that I could help try to shape, um, shape her in some way by having a puppy. But of course this, this world too means I, it's hard to do any training except for myself, which, you know, 
I don't have a degree in that. And so, um, and also I'm a real sucker. You know, she does the tiniest, you know, she started eating my slippers right away. And then now she thinks all my shoes are for her because I thought it was so damn cute her eating my slipper because it's bigger than she is. Um, I sort of didn't put a stop to it quickly enough. And now, you know, I'm lucky if I can get any shoe out of her mouth. It's really crazy. Maybe we need some toys that look like shoes. So that exactly. Can if you can recommend, shoe. you have been such an enormously helpful resource in terms of all this stuff because some of her favorite toys now are the ones that you recommended. So oh, good. that's good. Yeah, she really likes them. Yay. Do you feel as though when you're going back to working on your projects that she might be able to join you if you're going to be doing something outside of Los Angeles for days to weeks at a time? If I have to go outside of Los Angeles, there's no way I'm going anywhere without that dog. That's okay. for sure. And the good okay. news is... Um, the two, the American Horror Story season, I guess it's 10 now, and then uh, Impeachment, the crime story series, we were, I was going to be shooting them at the same time, but they both shoot on the same lot, and obviously it's a real family environment, people I've worked with for a long time, um, so I'll be able to bring her with me, and I, I guarantee there'll be no shortage of people who will want to <laughs> take, <laughs> <laughs> take on the job. Hopefully she'll have a little um, babysitters on site. Yes, although it's going to be a little, I'm a little concerned. I was going to ask you about this too, because uh, for, for impeachment, I have to wear full uh, prosthetics. So I'm covered in silicone. And, and I, wonder, I wonder what that will be like for the dog and if she'll try to bite my prosthetic nose off or <laughs> if she'll also find it really strange because I look different and right. smell very different because there's so much. I just have been wondering what that's going to be like for her, if it's going to be totally traumatizing. Well, hopefully the rest of you will smell familiar so she can first smell your hands and your clothes and, yeah. and oh, maybe she'll get used to how different <laughs> it'll be interesting so. to see how different you'll end up looking. Oh, it's, it's very different. It's struggling. So yeah. what we as a group are trying to do in the Pets in Need project is to provide free veterinary care to those who need it the most, especially the homeless communities. What do you think about the project that we're doing thus far? Oh God, I think, you know, Anytime anybody can be of service to people who are less fortunate, people who are struggling. And um, like I said, my, my sense of purpose, even in just taking care and being responsible for um, this tiny being, uh, any person who takes that on and who needs help to, to make sure that the dogs are getting good care and um, health care and medicine that they need. And just to know that, that, there's an organization out there looking out for, for animals that, that are in need is always something I'm going to support and be excited about. And, and I, I think it's, I think it's an extraordinary thing that you guys are doing and very necessary and makes me worry a little bit less every time you're driving down the street or walking down the street and you see an animal um, with a person who you wonder how they're even eating. And, and although I do think any dog owner tends to um, probably take care of their animal before they take care of themselves. Well, um, where can we find you and Winnie, more importantly, if we want to learn <laughs> more about you and follow your work? Well, I've tried to um, create something called Winnie Wednesday on my Instagram, where every Wednesday I try to post some, you know, of course, it always run, you always run the risk of like, anytime you post a, a, a picture of your dog or your child, it's like to you, it's the most glorious, fascinating thing. And you don't want to bore the people, but I do try to do Winnie Wednesday every Wednesday. Um, and my Instagram handle, um, I think it's Miss Sarah Catherine Paulson. Um, but I think there's an underscore there somewhere. I don't really know because, you know, I made it so long ago. And of course I just, I, I keep using it and, and post on it, but I, I can't actually remember my handle, but I think it's Miss Sarah Catherine Paulson. I have That's certainly right. I've enjoyed seeing Winnie on your social media. Uh, it, was, it was really interesting actually when you talked about the need to have her teeth extracted. That was very informative and probably will help a lot of owners who are having the same question. So I hope that they see that. Yeah, because when I first saw her teeth, I thought it was just hilarious that she looked like a crocodile or something. And then when you, when you examined her, you were like, these have to come out. And I was like, they have to come out. But it's, you know, but I'm interested in her having a good dental hygiene because I want, I want Winnie on the planet as long as I can have the, the pleasure of her company. So I know that the more I stay on top of that kind of thing and, and with your help, I will, I will have her for a long time. I really appreciate you supporting this cause. Uh, it's great that you're willing to help us in this and we look forward to seeing you again. Say goodbye to Winnie for us. We really appreciate I will. you. <laughs> thank you so much for all your help and thank you for what you guys are doing. I'm really, really happy to, to help spread the word. I think it's a really extraordinarily great, great thing to be spending your time doing. Thank you very much. And we're going to be, um, so if you want to follow our journey, you can follow our journey on lvetsciences.com uh, forward slash pets in need or lvetsciences social media, Facebook and Instagram. 
for my social media, Facebook and Instagram, Patrick Mahaney. We look forward to seeing you again. We appreciate you. Thank you, you so, Thank you much. so much for what you do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, Sarah. Bye. Bye.